we're at Farm Works with Dave McTavish and just looking at the Monta 257 tape and how it's used. So, Dave, if you could just walk me through the importance of using the right tape and how to splice it, we'd appreciate that. Uh, the importance of the correct tape is basically the fact that with uh, the amount of heat and the materials used in the process, um, without the correct tape, we end up having uh, melted tape, um, web breakages, um, or residue buildup in the machine, uh, which causes further process issues uh, down the line. Uh, Monta tape is about the only thing we found that really, you know, can hold up to uh, the process through the machine uh, and withstand the, the temperatures that are applied to the material and still stay flexible and fluid. Okay. And uh, comparing if you're not using Monta tape, what have you seen out there and what kind um, of results do you get? There have been multiple you know, attempts to try to splice material together. Um, people use anything from masking tape, packing tape, to things that are called PVC splicing tape. Um, uh, the majority of those tapes, what you have is, uh, once you apply heat, the adhesives you know, start to break down, um, or the backing material just completely melts, um, and then your web breaks, and then you have machines with downtime. Mm -hmm. um, and cleaning up and, and then restarting the whole process over. Um, so uh, it's, it's very important to have good solid tape. Great. So can you show us just how to do a quick splice? And so the splice you're doing is basically by hand, you're coming from the bottom bottom side of the film. Coming from the bottom side of the film, trying to actually wrap the tape around completely. That was my um, next question. Yeah. Yeah, to ensure the, the best possible adhesion throughout the whole process. Okay. So, tape's cut. Wrapped around. And I know it's going to vary from material to the material and machine to machine in terms of the roll size and how much feed you get. But how often do you think you might be using a splice in a typical machine, typical process? Um, full out production time, probably um, somewhere in the range of once every hour to once every two hours. Okay. Um, it's fairly common. So again, if you have a bad tape, if you have problems, that's a every problem hour, an hour. You, you, have, you have 15 minutes of downtime every hour if yeah. you have bad splices. Fantastic. <laughs> so we unlock it and then watch it progress through the machine. Okay. At this point, our tape's coming up to the first sensor, so it'll identify it as a problem. And as we pass through our form station, we know the tape is in that place, so we know not to form that material. So at that point, it's now laminated. You can't see it, but the sensor is going to calculate it and automatically pick it out, pick it out and, and so into the waste basket. Right here at some point. Now there's our slice. Ah.
And if, and if we had a bad splice or if we had smudging or adhesive build up and it did pass through, then we might end up with extra kickback. What would happen to those smudged areas or adhesive areas? Uh, well, the problem with some of those smudged areas is uh, if it's in a place where you're not trying to monitor specifically, um, you could have smudges or adhesive get out on product that makes it out the door. Okay. Very good. So can we try a top splice now? Okay, Dave. So here we got a, a splice on the top floor of the This one basically the performance of the tape, the pros and cons that we discussed in the front area. So the pros and cons that we talked about in the front area is pretty much the same as what's going to happen here. Just a bit There it's exposed to the heat. And then it's passed through and rejected. Okay? Thank you.